the other day I did a video about uh, my feelings about coming to Ecuador. I, I think I expressed uh, some try try to provide some assurance to everybody that it's safe to come here. There's really nothing to worry about. Things have really settled down a lot. I mentioned that um, didn't seem like it was really any worse uh, now after the state of emergency is over with than it was before the state of emergency during the state of emergency um, there's ever since I've been in Ecuador there's been you know normal well I won't say normal but there have been you know shootings and cr crimes taking place and robberies and stuff like that throughout Monta just like it has throughout all of time you know, and then we had the state of emergency because of the, the prison break from the gang leader, the cartel gang leader, and then there was the state of emergency and the government under the new president, Noboa, took on the cartel, and took our prisons back and made great progress in trying to clean up the crime that's going on in this country. So, and then of course I left and went to the States. I stayed in the States through much of the state of emergency. And, and then when I came back, you know, I just, just using my uh, observations of just you know, it just seemed like things were just kind of back to normal. Didn't really see any great concern uh, about my safety or my girlfriend's safety or any of my friend's safety. Uh, yesterday, on the 17th, at about 4.30 p.m., I was laying on my couch. I was just waking up from a nap, and I heard... Pow! Pow! And it was a gunshot. It was two gunshots. Sounded like it was right here on this balcony. So I got up and grabbed my phone, walked out here, and right down below me here, there was a pickup truck that had crashed into the wall that part of the driveway that goes down into our lower level parking garage and this guy had been shot. I remember when I heard the two shots go off, I heard a motorcycle take, a, take off at what seemed like a really high rate of speed. But turns out that a couple boys on a motorcycle wanted to rob this guy and he was sitting in his pickup truck and they shot him through it, right through his window. And um, and he somehow ended up crashing right here into our, our wall. There's some video at the end of this clip. If you want to watch it, stick around. You can watch it. I've, I've, I provided the footage that I shot while I was uh, watching all of this unfold. And so, yeah, they're here. Right here. It happened right here in my neighborhood, right here where I thought was a safe place. Uh, uh, oh, oh and, and just so you know, the guy has survived. Um, you can see from the footage, you know, that he's sitting up and talking to people. And at the beginning, it's pretty obvious that he was in shock, which I wouldn't blame him. Um, the cops showed up, and this, to me, just as alarming as the shooting itself, it was even more alarming to me that the police showed up, probably seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And I don't think they were here more than ten minutes. I don't think they were on this scene 
more than 10 minutes. No crime scene tape put up, no investigations, no questions asked. There was one of my neighbors was on the street feeding the cats when the shooting took place. He didn't actually see the shooting. He saw the guys run, take off on the bike. You know, stuff like this happens so fast. But, you know, the cops didn't interview anybody or anything. They just like, I guess there was nothing in it for them, so they just went on. As you can see from the video clip at the end of this clip, they're just standing in the street, probably waiting to see if the hamburger joint's going to open up. You know, it opens at 5. I'm surprised they didn't all just go down there and sit down and have a burger. It's, it's a, incredible to me sometimes the incivility that I see in this country. I'm not going to use this video to sit here and badmouth Ecuador and the politicians and the, the police, but sometimes it, I really wonder what is the point. For the most part, I've been happy being here, but I got to tell you, man, it's starting to wear on me. Between the knife being pulled on me in Cuenca two years ago and the guy down here wanting to fight me in the street, and not to mention the fucking internet trolls, the Tom LaVey's asshole that wanted to troll me, and then the tickets that I got. On top of all of this shit that happened yesterday, this shooting that took place at my front door, I got another message from my lawyer that there's another ticket that has to be fought. Even after I got my new license plate, there's still a ticket that's assigned to the previous plate that I have to show up for a hearing for next week while they fight it. He'll fight it and I'm, he'll win it. But... You know, when is it all going to end? I, you know, I don't know how much longer I can put up with this. I'm not trying to give you a sob story. I'm not looking for any sympathy or anybody to feel sorry for me. But, you know, this is the reality of living in a country like Ecuador. This is a third world country. It is a developing nation. And it has a long ways to go before it's going to be any better. So I'm very, I'm really, really disappointed. I, 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 I woke up so many times last night thinking about this and thinking about this shit that's happening here and the, the violence. I've got footage, pictures of, that I took from my front balcony outside my front door that I shot just right down the street from here by the mall where they had a shooting before I went to the States and right in the middle of the street, broad daylight, shooting between gang members and the transit police, you know. And supposedly this is our safe neighborhood, one of the safe neighborhoods here, here where I'm at, here in Masia Lago. So, you know, dude, I, 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 I don't know what to tell you folks as far as, you know, would you, if, if, if I were in your shoes and I had a choice, I think I would be thinking about somewhere else besides here for right now. Got to give this time, this place time to get its shit together. And who knows how long that's going to take. I'm going to continue doing videos. And um, I'm going to just do the best I can and just continue doing what I've been doing. And that's just sharing my experiences. Um, as you know, I'm not going to give advice on whether you should come here or not. There are still people coming in, but there's a lot of people are leaving. And that's very discouraging to me. 
could be good for you, which means there's going to be ample real estate available. And the prices seem to be coming down a little bit, too. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. And if you want to watch the video, just continue watching. I'll, it'll be right after this. And you can see, you know, there's nothing gory. It's nothing, it's really like nothing to see, but it's just, uh, I took some footage from up here and then from down there uh, of this poor guy. And I, you know, that's all I got. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. So the guy in the white truck there got shot. The guy is getting out. I don't think he's hurt very bad. So everybody got to see where he got shot. Must have just got grazed or something. So the truck ran into that wall right there, right there. Now he backed out me. So the guy that's getting into the truck there just got shot right out here in front of my place. I think I'll go downstairs and see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. I saw it look like he ran into the wall right there. Yeah, he did. Um, I imagine it was a bit of a wake up call. Yeah. Just one or two dudes on the other side. Yeah. There's a loud one, too. Really caliber. I yeah. got that myself. I mean, he's like Woke me up. I was napping. Right there. Of course, the police are all standing around talking to each other and talking on their phones. And, uh, we hope they got a name. The guy seems to be 
be okay. But apparently he was sitting in the truck and these guys came up and wanted to rob him with his candy and stuff, I guess. And then they shot him through the window. So that's what's happening here in Monta today. Just another, just another shooting. That's all. At least he's alive. And here comes the bomberos. <laughs> 